Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. Our next topic is indicators and advanced charting techniques. I'm your host, Lee Bowl, joined today in the chat by a lot of people's favorite coach, James Boyd. So everybody say hello to JB. Uh, let me ask you a question before we get going. So a lot of people like to look at candlesticks. Do you know how to integrate candlesticks into your scans? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Uh, but before we can get to all that good stuff, though, just a few logistical items. Uh, we want to hear from you, so go ahead and chat in there. For the ones I don't get, JB will answer. Also, we have some written disclosures we have to go through. Uh, the information that we're going over today should be considered as inf information that is uh, basically hypothetical and any symbols you see me use are to illustrate functionality and concepts and they are not recommendation. We do use a lot of technical analysis in this class, but we do not recommend the use of technical analysis as your sole method of investment research. If you are using the paper money function on our trading platform, keep in mind that results in paper money do not always translate into real-time trading because market conditions change. Also, for sake of simplicity, we'll not include the effect of commissions or taxes. And finally, investing does involve risks, including the risk of loss of principal. And then we have, uh, let's start off with something right away. We have a uh, question in the chat about uh, the times that our uh, webcasts are displayed in. Just wanna show you a way you can fix that for yourself. Um, I'm gonna pull over our coaching calendar, which you can, go to schwab.com slash coaching or either schwab.com slash live. And you can set the time frame up in here what you want your um, webcast to be shown in. And then it will automatically fix the calendar. Also, you can get recordings right from this calendar. You can just go into uh, any previous event and you can watch that particular one just by clicking on the link here. So you can either go here or you can go to the uh, YouTube page. But if you want to display it in your time zone, this is a good workaround for you with that. All right, take that back off. So our agenda for today is we are going to implement some uh, candlestick patterns into our uh, scans. And uh, we'll discuss some pros and cons of that as well as we go over. And we will try to do an example trade. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, move over to our trading platform. This is Thinkorswim Desktop. Remember, there's a couple different versions. There's Thinkorswim Web, and this is Thinkorswim Desktop. So. I just put up the SPX just to see where we are. We hit a new uh, all-time high today, but we have since backed off from that. Uh, we'll see if this bearish engulfing candle, speaking about candles, we'll go ahead and um, see if that's going to cause a retreat. You know, we have retreated. This is the 20-day moving average. We've retreated this couple times. Maybe this is suggesting we might go down there and test again. Uh, but we'll have to see what the market does. All right, I just want to, um, I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna be talking about candles for a second. And I know this is review for a good many of you, but we have a lot of new people that are on our webcast toe too. Let's just go over what a candlestick is. So this is a candlestick and it tries to show you activity in a period. So this is currently a daily chart. So each one of these candles is a day. Uh, and what you have is the, the box. You can see these boxes here and here. That's the difference between the open and the close. So the top of the box uh, is the open and the lower box is the close. If the close is below the open, the candlestick is red if the, you can set it any color you want but generally if the close is above the open then the candle body is green we call this the body we call these tails so the tails show you uh the low and the high of the day not, not just the open or the close so in this candle here this was the low 
can see you had a little excursion above the high right there. Here again, this is the high of the day. This is the low of the day. And the open and the close were fairly close. We call that a, a doji. All right. Okay. So um, on a previous webcast, I showed you how to look for pullbacks. And in uptrending stocks or indices, we often look for pullbacks to um, give some traders a potential entry to join the trend, maybe at a lower price, right? So I had built this scan and I'm just gonna go over it. We've already done this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up um, our YouTube page. And what I want you to do, if you are interested in what I'm gonna show you just now, because we, we, we did a whole webcast on this particular scan that we're not gonna do again. I just wanna make a comparison, but go to playlists, go to uh, advanced charting over here, uh, click that. And the one that you might wanna review after this is over is the art of pullback trading. And this one right here, the art of trading pullbacks. So uh, you might wanna use that as a, as a baseline. So now that you know where you can get the details, I'll just quickly go over what this is so we can compare it to the next one we're gonna do. So I just said I want a stock over $20 a share. All right, we, um, we don't really need that one. And then I just said, I want a stock in an uptrend. We're looking for uptrend pullbacks, okay? So I just said the 50-day moving average is greater than the 100-day moving average. The 100-day moving average is greater than the 200-day moving average. So if you stack the moving averages in a proper order, it can give you a stock that is going up. Then I simply said, I want the low today, um, greater than the 20 day moving average. I'm looking for a 20 day pullback. And then we have this little script in here. Again, we're not gonna go over this, but I did set it to a 20 day moving average. You can set whatever moving average you wanna pull back to within this little code here. All right, but again, that's why you have to watch the other webcast. So if we scanned in here, all right, we can just take a look at, uh, can take a look at some of these, look at, uh, I'm scanning in the uh, Russell 1000. All right, so this one has gone up and it's within about a percent, which is how I set it of the 20 day. So we're having maybe a little flag type pullback on this one. Uh, I think another one there was Goldman Sachs. That's kind of pulled back to the 20 day moving average as well. But let's take off the moving average for a second. You don't need a pullback necessarily to a moving average. Now, some people like pullbacks to moving averages because it is an area of support. But on the other hand, sometimes, you know, you can get something like this. Maybe it's not even near a moving average, but you have a nice up move and it kind of consolidates. And then often it can take off again. So that might not be a moving average, but maybe there's a way that we can use a different approach to find maybe shorter term pullbacks. We can use it to find, uh, we have uh, James on the on the chat. He's a big fan of holds. For those that are new, that's a close above the high of the low day of the pullback as a, uh, some traders use that as a, as a trigger. So what we need to do is have a way to do that, not necessarily using moving averages. So this is kind of fun. And you can do this with a lot of different candlestick signals. What we're going to do is go to a chart. So I have Goldman Sachs here. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we can go ahead to, uh, we want to go here to patterns. And we want to go to select patterns. All right. So these are all of the candlestick patterns here. You can certainly use any of those. 
The question, of course, is, you know, when you say display it, it'll display it on the chart, but you're not screening for it. It's going to just paint it, the bar a different color uh, if it is in one of these. So that's maybe not what we want. We want to do something a little bit more bespoke, if you will. So what we're going to do is go here to create. All right. So there's all different types of pullbacks. Uh, you know, you can have a nice three-day move up, two-day move down. There's all different combinations. So I'm going to show you how to build some of those combinations, and then I'm going to show you how to put it into a scan on the scan tab. All right. So let's start. Let's do uh, where we have the last, where we have the last six days. Maybe we have three up days, two down days, and a hold. So how are we going to get that as a candlestick pattern? Anybody know? I'll show you. Boop. So the first one we want, so you click on the candle here. All right. The first one is an up candle. All right. We want another up candle and another up candle. Now, if we want it going up, what we'd like to see is going up. So we'd like the lows, right? This low to be higher than this low, this low to be higher than that low. How the heck do we do that? Okay, so we do it this way. I click on that little low there, I drag this over, and then I say, I want this low greater than that low. And then I want this low greater than that one. Oops. All right, so I want it um, greater than that one. And now we want a red candle. So we'll have a down candle. And let's do two down candles. And let's have them start pulling back. So this one, this low is lower than this one. Okay, and now how about the hold? All right, so we want an up candle, and what we want is the close to be above this high, right? That would be a close above the high of the old day. So I didn't want that. I want the close, sorry. Close, come on. There we go is greater than all right so here would be a one hold setup so we're going to save this i'm going to give it a name i'm going to say hold you know three up two down down is spelled d-o-w-n for those of you who are new all right Okay, so um, now what we're going to do is save this. All right, so now I have this. I can display it on the chart, but that's not what I want. I want to put it into a screen. How the heck am I going to do that? So first thing we're going to do is just we'll apply it to the chart. You know, we really don't see one of those here. It's not displaying, but we have it built now. So now... What we're going to do is go to the scan tool, and we're just going to get rid of everything here. Okay. And I'm going to start with uh, a new filter. So I'm going to add a condition group. all of the following. So when you do all, that means it's like, and you need this and this and this. There's also one, any, that would be, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. You're gonna see that we're gonna be using that in a second. But what I wanted to show you first is just either how to scan for that setup by itself or add it to an uptrend. So, Let's get the uptrend first. So we're going to go ahead and we'll scoon in the Russell. 
thousand here, and we will um, add a filter to the and. Okay, and we will just say uh, study. We open this up here. We take that off. Add condition. So let's just get an uptrend. Again, we can do it with moving averages. We could say the 20 moving average is greater than the 50 is greater than the 100. So let's do that first just to see if we get uptrends before we add anything else, okay? So we're going to go study here. Simple moving average. We're going to click on it. Set it for the 20 day. Now that greater than the 50 day moving average. The 50 day. All right, so there's one. Let's add another one. We'll do here a simple moving average. We'll do the uh, 50 greater than the 100 day. Again, stacking the moving averages is what we call this in technical analysis land. A hundred, we could do a hundred and nine, but we'll do a hundred. All right, so then we say, okay, and we scan in there and there's plenty of them, right? So let's put those moving averages on the chart first. So I'll put on my study set with the 2050, 100, and 200, the 2050 and the 100. There we go. All right. So now let's just take a look at some of these. We'll look at the, I don't know, ACN. All right. We got what we wanted, right? We got an uptrending stock. Step number one. Okay. Uh, now, let's look for uptrending stocks that have that first candlestick pattern. How the heck are we going to do that? Here is the trick, everybody. So we are going to go over to patterns. We're going to go over to select patterns. And now we're going to go to candlestick. And I'm going to find my... What did I call it? Uh, I have one in here called two up. Where did I do the other one here? I thought I saved it. Right? All right. Here's one with uh with five. I want the three up to let's let's build it again just to do it because um. I don't know why it didn't save. So let's do it again. We'll create it. It's good. It's good practice to up candle, up candle, up candle, down candle, down candle, up candle. And again, we'll do this again. We want this to be greater than that. We want this to be greater than that. We want this to be less than that, we want this to be, whoops, this to be less than that. And then we want this one, we want the close to be above the high of that day. All right. Must not have given it the right, um, we'll say, uh, three up to down. I'm going to save that. Okay. Now here's what we do. Okay. We go here and we click on this. But the next step we want to do is we go here to thinkorswim. Think Swip editor, and we just copy the code. We do it all the way down to the pattern plot. 
and we don't need the painting strategy. All we needed is to this point here. All right, so let's go. And then, so we have that, right? So now we'll come back over to the scan function and we are going to add to a new condition group, any of the following, because we're gonna add more of these, okay? So we're going to add a filter, a study filter. Take that away. Stick that in there. All right, so now let's scan and see if we have that particular one. We may not, but let's, let's try it. Yeah, so that particular pattern we don't have. Now, now that you know how to do it, all right. I have built a screen with many of those different patterns. All right. So now that you know how to do it, I'm just going to pull up now my save screen. It's called Candle Pullback. And what I have is at least one, two, three, four, five different candle patterns that should be pullbacks uh, with different number of bars and everything like that, right? And we still have this uptrend, so let's see if we get anything. Why, well, yes, we do, okay? All right, so we can take a look at a couple of these. Let's look at URI. Well, that's very nice. So this one was our candle pattern. I think it had five up, three down. And we don't know where it's going to close. But right now, the uh, last trade is just, right? It's right here. It's just above here. We don't know if it's going to close. So pretty cool, right? So there's one. Another way, let's look at another one. Now they're not all gonna be perfect, but let's take a look at um, Lazard. Take a look at Lazard here. All right, zoom in here. So this one, I had some with mixed candles. I had two up, one down, two up, down. And now this one is, Closing above right, right now, the trade is above the this is a hold if it closes that way, too. All right, so that's just the way that you can add things to your scanning. Now, you can do other things as well. All right, let's say you want a particular, not that uh, I'm just going to do an example here, I don't know if we'll get any, but I did want to show you another way that you could use this in some setups. Um, so let's go back to patterns again. Select pattern, candlestick. Let's say that you want a shooting star. A shooting star is where it shoots up and then it closes near the low of the day. Sometimes that can be a blow off, uh, a blow off, um, type of signal, all right? So let's look at, so the way you can do a particular one, let's go find shooting star, all right? So we do the same thing. All we want is the code. So we just take the code, scroll down, and you want it to not, you want to stop it where it says painting strategy because that paints it on the chart. We just want the scanning part of it, which is the plot, all right? So we copy that. Uh, let's see if we get any. So this time, we're going to clear all these filters. This time, let's take off these two. And this time, we'll just scan for that shooting star and see what we get.
Yeah, we didn't get any there. Let's try the uh, let's try the Russell three thousand to see if we get one. All right, so there's a couple. Um, let us take a look. Let's take a look at the uh, ATLO. So it's a little one, you know. We might want to change the code so we got one with a little bit better tail, but that's certainly in the in the um, spirit of what we're doing. And actually, this one actually had a tail right at the hundred-day moving average. So that's for some traders that might be a sign that it's failing there. Okay, let's look at another one. TCMD, let's take a look at that one. Yeah, so we have one, it's just, um, so this is pretty interesting. We had a big up move and it looks like if we draw in a uh, kind of a resistance level, we're getting it kind of right at resistance. Now, I couldn't find any today but this particular one with the shooting star okay how would you get a blow off top with that well you'd want something that is really going up fast then has a shooting star and maybe that's the top especially if you added in a volume spike as well. That'd be a climactic top. Now, I didn't have any today, but I wanted to show you, you know, maybe we'll get one now. I don't know. But I want to show you how some traders might look for that, even though we might not get one today, since we're talking about putting candlesticks into our scans. All right. So let's add in to our current scan. So we have, this is the, the candlestick pattern right? This is the shooting star. To get a blow off top, we want to look for something that is really going up fast, okay? And strongly. There's a couple ways you could do that. One is just to look for a stock with a very high ADX. Uh, if you're not familiar with ADX, it's a trend strength indicator. So let us see if that's true all right so we're going to add another so we want it to be all we want an and in this one so we're going to put it in here so we're going to add another filter yeah. okay so study this time adx and you know, let's set it for 20 days, the last month. Now, with the ADX, it depends on who you read. But some people think, you know, over 30 is a pretty good trend. Over 40 is a really good trend. You know, if you really wanted a blow off top, maybe you would make it like 45 or 50. Um, because that's something that's basically going parabolic, either going parabolic up or parabolic down. But we'll try, let's try 40. So we want the ADX with the 20-day trend, okay, to be greater than 40, which is a kind of a high number. Now, again, I don't know if we'll get anything. You know, we can set it maybe within three bars to try to get a couple of more. All right. I don't know if we'll get any, but yeah, we didn't get any today. Um, another way you could do it is if if you just want an uptrend that has got a, we could we could take this off, and we could use our moving average. Um, whoops, we can use our moving average way to get an uptrend. So let's try that and see if we get an uptrend that. Um, 
take a look at that too. And then we'll take a look at the questions after I do this. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll add in here another filter. We'll use our moving averages to get the uptrend this time. All right, so let's go and take a look at Let's do a quick uptrend. So let's do the um, simple moving average. You know, uh, we want the 10 day, do a real fast one, 10 day greater than the 20 day. Again, I don't know if we'll get any. And we'll do the 20 day greater than the 50 to get us bigger uptrend. The 20 is greater than the 50 day. All right, so this is a different way to get an uptrend. What we're looking for is a stock that is going up and then had the um, shoot up there. With uh, So I don't know if we're going to get it or not. We'll just see. All right, there's one. So let's see if, uh, let's see what it looks like. Well, we did get it, but ra we would rather see this candle at the top as opposed to here. But maybe we have an uptrending stock. It's flattening out. You know, this is resistance. But again, with what the market is doing, we don't have a lot of go ahead and um, we don't have a lot given what the market's doing that are shooting up and, and crashing necessarily today. But it is, uh, it, is, it is pretty good. All right, I'm going to look at some questions now. Let's see. Uh, what's the difference between your custom candle pattern and a hike and ashy candle pattern? Well, you can, I mean, there's a lot of different types of candle patterns, right? I mean, you can have lots of different ones. Um, I don't know if you can do those. I don't know if you can do the uh, screening with the, uh, the ones that you mentioned, though, because in the patterns, that's not a, a one that you can play around with. You can only do the, the regular candles. So I guess that's how I'd answer that. Um, we have a question, what is ADX again? Yes, so ADX is a trend strength indicator. It doesn't tell you the direction of the trend. It does tell you though the strength of it. So let's just, to prove that point, let's just screen for high, D, high ADX stocks, all right? And so you can see. So let's do another one here. Oops. I don't want on demand. I want to take that off. Sorry. So we're going to um, remove all our filters here. And we will just do. So we'll do ADX. To answer your question. Now let's do greater than 30. Oops, did not that. How about 35? And uh, we don't need to go look through 3,000 stocks for this. Let's do the NASDAQ. All right, so there's lots. So Somebody wanted to look at NVIDIA, it's certainly trending, right? 
But this is another way if you just want stocks that are moving. Now, that's a pretty good bearish engulfing candle, though, on um, NVIDIA. Some traders might say that uh, you could have more of a pullback coming with that. We'll have to see if it can hold the 20-day moving average uh, when it pulls back. But you can see you're going to get very high um, trending stocks. Let's look at uh, Netflix is in there, Meta is in there. Okay. Now, why don't we, we saw that one in NVIDIA. Let us go ahead and what was that? Let's go back to NVIDIA and see if we can build another one now that we know how to do things with candlesticks. Oops. All right. So that's a bearish engulfing candle. So we could add to our high ADX screen, a bearish engulfing candle and see if we get more of these. All right, so let's try that. So we go to here, we'll go to charts, select patterns, and then we'll go to here, candlestick. And again, we'll look at uh, engulfing. All right, see which. So we'll get bullish and bearish ones this way, but at least we'll get them. So what we do is to get the code, we click on that little thing there, right? And then we will go all the way down. And we don't want the, uh, we just wanna go down to the plot. Uh, give me a second here. Okay, we copy that, go back over to our scanning tab here, and let's add it in. So any of the following will do that. Study, open that. Okay, I kind of did this on purpose. Notice how that we don't have the OK, all right? So that means that I didn't copy a, either enough of the code, so we need to go back. That's how you check, all right? I kind of did that on purpose. Let's see. Um, let's go back and see if we can get it all the way down here. All right. Shit painting strategy. Okay. Try the whole thing, see what that does. Oops. And stick it in here. Okay, so for some reason, let's see. Oh, shit, let's take this off. All right, I'm having difficulty with this one. So, show you that it's not quite as easy as it looks, but there you go. Now, we could, we could build that. Let's try that. All right, let's go to pattern. Since that one doesn't seem to be working, we'll go ahead and try it a different way. Let's go here to uh, charts, patterns, select patterns, and we will create one. So how about a couple of uh, up candles here? And then we'll make this one an, an engulfing one. So for the engulfing, this body has to engulf this body. So uh, let's have this one go up. So we'll have this low, greater than that one. And now we want this body to engulf this one. So we want it to go from the, this close to here. Oops. 
Let's do it. We'll do the whole thing. Come on. There we go. We'll say that's uh, less than there. And then we want this one greater than. Should really do the body, but I don't know if it's going to let me do that. There you go. All right, so there is an engulfing candlestick, right? All right. So, whoops. So let's go here to try it. Again, I'm working through this with you. So let's try this. There we go. So we did it right for the OK, all right? All right. Let's see if we get anything. NVIDIA. All right. That's the only one in the NASDAQ 100. But we saw that that's let's try the uh, let's try that Russell 1000. See if we get any other ones. All right. NVIDIA JBL. Let's take a look at JBL. Didn't want that to happen. Yeah, there we go. An uptrend will take off. I'm going to change this grid. So there we go. We have a bearish engulfing candle after an uptrend. So sometimes that can be the beginning of a, a pullback. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put that scan with many of those different candlestick signals into the chat. I'll also put it into the notes um, in the archive. So let me just load that again. I call that the candle pullback. Now I'm going to go to share this. And share. So now let me stick it in the should have gone in there now. Yep. So that would be uh, this one. This is this is not the uh, this is the um, the one with all the different can different ones. Three up, two down, four up, two down. All of those. So you can look for different types of pullback. Remember that scripts are not uh, guaranteed for timing or accuracy. And I did go to flexible grid on these charts. So I forget that. All right. All right. So other than my going ahead and screwing up the uh, charts there, but you can see that you can put any candle pattern, build it yourself, and then you can add it to any scan to add that in there. Okay. All right. So I want to thank you for your kind attention. Uh, hopefully you found this maybe interesting a little bit. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the button to the lower right. Also, don't forget to follow uh, James and myself on X. Uh, James is at James Boyd CS, and I'm at Lee Bowl CS. So thank you very much. Take care, everybody, and see you again next week. Bye-bye.